Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over a vector identity uh, derivation, uh, quick derivation using index notation uh, that we'll need for Krakow's equation that just shows up and it's one of those things where um, if you if somebody just tells you, oh, it's a vector identity, you can either use it or you can kind of see where it comes from. And I like to know where things come from. So this is why I'm going through this vector identity proof. You by no means need to watch this uh, for being able to go through the, the derivation for Taylor McCall, but it's interesting nonetheless. Um, I'm not going through the complete basics on index notation, also known as indicial notation or Einstein notation, but I'm putting a couple of links to some PDFs that, are, that I think are helpful um, or explain it uh, in, in, a, in a good way. Um, so those will be in the uh, description of the video if you want to check those out before looking at this. But I'll try to walk through. Uh, I'll try to walk through it. Here is the uh, the vector identity that we're trying to prove. So I'm going to go from I'm going to prove from both sides instead of just starting from one side and and going through the whole derivation and then backing out what these are. Um, I think it's easier to to start with both sides and then go through and show that they equal each other in index notation. Um, okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is. Um, well, they're color coded. So we have the reds on the left, and then we have the blues and the greens. Um, these are some uh, these are some words or uh, search terms that you can look up um, that I'll be either saying or they'll be f they'll look familiar to you uh, if you read through any of these uh, PDFs that I put up. Um, so like the summation rule, the dummy index, free index, uh, Levi Chavita, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and the Kronecker delta. Um, so to get started here, we have uh, a cross product of the velocity, a velocity crossed with the curl of the velocity. So um, this uh, epsilon i j k symbolizes the cross product here, and we're taking the cross product of the velocity and then of the curl. So this is the cross product of the velocity, and then the curl is again a cross product, but it's a cross product of the uh, of the del operator and the velocity. So that's this is the del operator and cross with the velocity here. Um, okay, so the J corresponds to the second term here in the epsilon, um, and the K, in the first K here, uh, corresponds to this K here. And what you get with the cross product of the J, K here is you end up getting the I direction. Um, if some of this is confusing, which it will be because I haven't gone through the basics, again, look at the PDFs to get a more substantial look at what this all means. Um, and then on this side we have um, we have pretty much a dot product. So if you have a dot product, you use um, this repeated index. So I'm using J's here. It doesn't matter what you use. You can use whatever letters you want. But for the dot product, we have VJ times VJ. That gives us the V squared here uh, over 2. And then this is, again, like here, this del uh, DI is, this, is uh, the notation for the, the del operator. And then in the green here, we have the velocity. And with the dot product, like I was saying here with the dot product, the indices are the same, so we're dotting um, the velocity and the del operator, so those are both going to have the same index, and then the velocity uh, here is going to have um, a new index j, so this is going to be v i d i v j. Okay, this one we can, this one we leave alone until the end. We don't change that. That's the final. So don't worry about this anymore. Okay, here I'm moving. I'm just moving this operator out here. So now I have epsilon ijk, epsilon klm, and then I this is now moved over here. So we have vj dl vm. This one I just took essentially a chain rule kind of operation here, and uh, so we have one half, and then vj. One of these vjs comes out, then we have di vj, and then the same thing here. It ends up being the same thing, and then again this stays the same. Uh, now what I did here is I used this um, cyclic rule. Um, uh, so what you can do is you can move the k to the front. We need to get the k to the front to match up with this k. Um, so if we move the k to the front, uh, we know that it stays that the epsilon stays positive because we're we're doing it in a in a cyclic manner. So this is positive. So if I'm moving the k to the front, um, as long as it as long as it goes k i j, it's still positive. If I had moved the j to the front, it would go j i k, and that would be going j i k, and that would be going the opposite direction in the circle, which would which would mean that this would be a negative epsilon j i k, but since we're going in the in this cyclic manner, um, then it's still positive. So we have epsilon k i j, epsilon k l m, and then these stay the same v j d l v m, and then here, since these two terms are the same, we just added them together, and the one half plus one half equals 
one. So we have VJ, DI, VJ, and then minus still this same term, VI, DI, VJ. Uh, again, now well, this one stayed constant, this one's now going to stay constant again, so we're only focused on the left hand side now. Okay, so one of the properties of these, these are the, the, the Lady Chavita um, terms for the cross product. And then there's a proof um, or theorem uh, that puts it in terms of chronic deltas, which are these, uh, like dels. I know I call like everything del essentially, but you know, you can see what they are. Um, so what it says is uh, this term right here, this epsilon kij, epsilon klm, is equal to this term in the parentheses. So we have a d, and then we take the first one here and the first one here, so i, l, times d, second one here, second one here. Well, it's the second one not including k. We're not including k now since they're both the same index. So the first one, so i, l, that's here, i, l, and the second one's j, m, j, m, and then that's minus d, first one here, second one here now, so I M, D, second one here, first one here, so J L. And then that's still the same term, V J D L V M here. Okay, so then what we do is we multiply, we just distribute this through to here, this through to here. And what these Kronecker deltas do is, uh, the Kronecker delta is equal to one if the indices are the same, so if I and L are the same, uh, at least for this Kronecker delta. Uh, and zero if the indices are different. So what this does is it changes the indices in here um, so that that this is true. So if we have an L, we're going to change it to an I. If we have an M, we're going to change it to a J for the first term when this, when this is distributed through. So if you look at the J, J was already a J, so we keep that. So that's VJ. DL, L changes to an I, so we change the D to an I from an L to an I. And then the M changes from an M to a J. So we get vj. For the second term, we do the same thing. So we're just distributing this through to this term. So we have, if, an, if it's an m, it becomes an i. If it's an l, it becomes a j. So the uh, j here is already a j, so that's vj. This l becomes a j, so that's dj. And then this m becomes an i, so it's vi. And then if you look at um, this left-hand side versus the right-hand side, you can see that this term, vj, di, vj, is this term, vj, di, vj, and this term you'll say that they're different, but they're actually not because you can just flip the indices, it doesn't matter, I could have picked, this could have been a, a, b, and this could have been, you know, c, c, d, and there's, but they're still the same, so um, the fact that there's the repeated index here with a, with the new index here and the same here, repeated index here with a, with a new index there, um, means they're the same term, so uh, it checks out that we have this minus this is equal to this minus this, and that's the index notation, Einstein notation, initial notation proof uh, for uh, this particular vector identity. Some of the PDFs I put up um, in the description go through other uh, identity proofs, so you can kind of see how they work. But it's pretty basic. But again, I didn't go through the, I didn't go through the what everything kind of meant. So if you were lost, um, I would recommend going through the, those those notes. They're really not as complicated as they as they look when you first look at them. Um, okay, so now with this knowledge, we can finally get to the uh, the derivation of Krakow's theorem, uh, so that we can continue with our full derivation of the Tillman call. Thanks for watching.